So far, with the calculus we've been doing, we've been doing what are called derivatives. And those are all about looking at a graph and then trying to tell something about the slope of the graph. So for example, you know, before with uh, derivatives, I'll just do this off to the side. I mean, with derivatives, what we were doing is, you know, we would look at a graph. Whoops, that's a really lousy graph. Uh, let me try that again. So we would look at some sort of graph. It doesn't even matter what the shape is. Maybe it's something like this right here. And we were looking at some sort of uh, way, at least derivatives, are all about telling what the slope of the tangent is. So for example, at uh, maybe at this point right here on this graph, well, on the slope of the well, the tangent does something like this, so the slope of that line is something. But over here, the tangent line is very different. It's something like this, so its slope is some negative value. You know, and up at the top, the slope would be zero, and so on. That's what we did with derivatives. Now, what we can do with an integral is something different. In fact, it's the opposite, you could say, of derivatives. Because see, doing derivations or derivatives, that's only half of calculus. So the other half is integrals. So now what I'd like to show you is, uh, I mean, integrals get a little bit complicated sounding at least, but uh, there's no reason why we can't do it. Now the reason why I say it gets complicated sounding is just because um, the notation is going to look different. You're going to see some things you haven't seen before necessarily, but it's totally, totally doable. And in fact, if you already understand derivatives, then integrals are actually not nearly as bad because an integral is just the opposite of a derivative. So I'm going to write this down. So an integral, first of all, what is it? It's the opposite of a derivative. Now what I mean by that, I mean you can actually literally do, you can figure out a function, see what its derivative is, and you can actually work backwards. So when I say it's opposite of a derivative, we use this word actually called anti derivative. That's actually a common word that we use for this. Okay, so when I say opposite of a derivative, we're going to talk about this notion of an antiderivative. And I'll give you some more, um, some more details on this a little bit later. But another thing I think that's really important is this. Remember how derivatives are just, yeah, finding the slope of a tangent. Well, the integral is just about finding the area under a curve. That's what it's mainly used for. Well, not quite. I mean, sometimes we're asked for, we're given a derivative of a function and we want to know the original function, then we would use this. Or we want to know the area under a curve. Now, the area under a curve is pretty easy in some cases. So for example, let's say we were trying to find the area under um, a graph like this. Maybe it's something that goes like this, a straight line. Well, then the area under that curve is actually really easy. I mean, there's nothing to it. All you'd have to do is, you know, find this right here, the area of the triangle. So no problem. That's easy. No problem there with the area under a curve. But what if the curve is, well, curvy? So let's say it's something that goes more like this. Um, I mean, it could be any shape now. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's some sort of parabola. If it's a parabola, this maybe gets a bit more complicated. Now you could say, oh, well, I might actually break it up into different shapes. And in fact, that's a smart way to do it. You might even think, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a little rectangles and do it. So I'm going to make, I mean, what I often do is just ask my students to actually try this out. So here's a curve. Try to find what the area is. And usually, rightly so, they're pretty clever. What they do is uh, they actually sit there and, and calculate a lot of this stuff here. So let's see now, you could actually make little ones like this right here. I mean, you could actually just try to draw it like this. You know, you could have the students actually calculate a whole bunch of these. And of course, you could take the area of each of these little rectangles and say that's approximately the area. But if you want to get a little bit better, well, maybe you make little triangles here in this end here. Um, so the idea behind integration is just this, that you take an infinite number of, so I mean this, oh, sorry, hold on a second. This is just a little bit harder, but this is the idea behind integration. Okay, so doing an integral is going to be some tool that we're going to use. Just like before, we had a tool and a trick, you know, to find the slope of a graph at any point. Well, we're going to be able to find the area under a curve the exact value of it, not just estimating. We're going to find the exact value. 
Now the idea is going to be basically to take an infinite number of infinitely small rectangles. So can you imagine if I took, instead of just a few of these rectangles, what if I took a billion rectangles? You know, I made them all like this right here, um, or even more. I mean, if I take an infinite number of really, really small rectangles, hopefully you can see and appreciate that that's when I would get closer and closer to the real area here. And that's the idea behind an integral. So now before going through the mechanics of actually calculating integrals, I think it's going to help to uh, look at a bit of notation. So what I'm going to do here is just show you um, a couple of things, just what it might look like. So what I'll do here is I'll say um, original, and I'll say, you know, like this is how we normally write the integral. So we normally call this thing the integral, and that's going to be something that's opposite to uh, derivatives. We'll see that in a second. So what if your equation goes y equals blah, 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 blah. Well, the way we write an integral, we're going to write it like this. It's going to be like a little curly looking S sort of thing. It's like this weird symbol. This means integral. Now we have to say what we're doing the integral for. So we're going to say y and then we say dx. I'll explain that in a second. Uh, just to give you the other notation you might see, um, if you have a function, instead of just an equation, maybe it's a function, so f of x, well then the integral would be this symbol here, integral. And in fact, we even call this the integral symbol. So integral of f of x dx. So if you can see here, we have some sort of trick here. What we normally do is we say the integral of some sort of, you know, whatever goes here, and we put a dx here. Now we have to put in something here. So first of all, what this integral means, it means, you know, the area under curve. Or sometimes it means the nt derivative. Okay, that's also going to be the same thing. Well, not exactly the same, but it's, it's certainly used uh, similarly. Turns out you're going to use antiderivatives to find areas under curves. So we're going to explain this. So this integral symbol here just means either to take the area under the curve or, you know, find an antiderivative. Now this one right here, what this represents, that's the equation to look at. I wrote EQN for equation. So that's just the equation to look at. So if you start with a Y, then you put in a Y. If you start with an F of X, you put an F of X. Now this is a really important part, this DX. A lot of students don't think this is important, but it really is. This is the variable you are working with. And again, in, uh, in simple calculus, there's going to be no problem because we're going to be considering only you know, equations of Y that are a function of X. So in that sense, I suppose this wouldn't really be needed, this dx. But again, what if you have an equation y equals, I don't know, 4z plus, you know, 3x squared plus, you know, 5q. Well, then you have to know what variable to work with. It's like when we did derivatives and we had dy dx. The dx told you to take the x derivative. Well, what this really tells you, this is like taking the x integral. So this is, this is important later when you get to more complicated integrals. This becomes really a lot more important. But for right now, this is essentially how it works. This integral symbol, equation you work with, and what variable you're going to be uh, integrating with respect to. So that is what we could say we have some notation. Now, when we talk about an antiderivative, uh, that is because um, integrals and derivatives are opposites to each other. So they're opposites of each other. So I'm going to show you a little, well, we're not going to quite show everything yet, but I'll show you a quick little sort of mini example here. We'll see how that works. So what if I have something like, um, what do I have this? No. Um, let's say I'm looking for something like, uh, I'll just give a little example here, so, example. Let's say I have something like y equals x squared. And then I can do the derivative. So if I want to do the derivative, it's easy. I can say dy dx, you know, that's, that's doing the derivative of it. And if you remember your derivatives, this 2 is going to come in front. So it's going to become 2 times x to the power of 1. So that right there, sort of going down, Maybe I'll write in a different color. So like this here. So going down 
When I say down, I mean from an equation to a derivative like this. You know, that's sort of doing this. But what if we started off with something else? So what if, for example, um, so I'll almost write this down, so you can go the opposite way. So the idea behind this is um, you, know, you start with a derivative. So maybe you're only given the derivative and want the, um, the original equation, we could say. So I want the original equation. So for example, what if we started with, so what if we were given uh, something like this? So let's say you start with you know, dy dx equals 2x. And you're asked, you know, what? Oops, that's really bad writing here. So what if you're asked, you know, what is the equation for y? That's the idea behind doing this here, okay? So what is the equation for y? So you see, we have a trick. We have a way to get from an original equation and down and do the derivative. And when I say down, I, I really imagine it always like this. There's an equation, and when you go down one step, it's derivative. Well, the way I consider this is uh, with this um, working the opposite direction is this. We start off with a derivative, and we want to go sort of back up. So how do we do that? Yeah, that's maybe the big question here. So how do you do that? Well, we have a trick. We have something called an anti-derivative. Okay, that's the idea behind it. Okay, we have something called an anti-derivative. And so this is how it goes, actually. So an anti-derivative goes as follows. So maybe I'll write this down again. We'll do it maybe in green here. So the way an antiderivative works is like this. So if we have a function, now the notation is going to look a bit weird here. So if we have a function f of x with uh, a derivative of, well, the general form of derivative will just be f prime of x. Uh, then we have something that we call an antiderivative. So the this is the new thing. So the antiderivative is given by capital F of x. Now that may not really make much sense in that sense. So um, what I'll do is maybe explain this. So basically, derivative of an antiderivative. Now this is going to sound a little bit complicated here, but I'll just write it down and hopefully I can explain it clearer. So the der uh, so what we have is we have an original function and then we can sort of go down and take the derivative. But there also exists some other function that what we call capital F of x. And the way it works is this: if you take that capital F of x, and you take its derivative. So take the derivative of this thing. Um, you get the original function. So the derivative of an antiderivative is just f of x. Now that may seem a little bit weird, so I'll show you this, and maybe this notation here won't necessarily make it better. I think what'll make it really a lot better is just to do some examples, and I'll show you that. But for right now, to formalize it is this. So if we had the antiderivative, which is f, you know, capital F of x, then the derivative See, the derivative of the antiderivative is just the original function, f of x. So this is sort of like the, it sounds really backwards, you know, the definition. It's almost like you use the definition, you use itself in its own definition here. So what we're talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about a function that if you take its derivative, it gives you the original function. So that's why I said it's a little bit opposite, because see, here if we started off with an equation, and we want it and we know it's derivative, that's easy. But what if we only start with an equation, we start with its derivative, and we want to know what is the original function? Well, it turns out something called an antiderivative, in other words, if you could find an antiderivative, the derivative of it is going to be the original function. 